So from now on, I'm going to uh, explore my topic. There should be a movement and the uh, spirit of Taswiya during the sacred mm -hmm. heart. Um, here's my topic. Um, the reason I um, picked up this topic is because I wanted to um, explore uh, more about um, the ramification of uh, Hajj uh, pilgrimage. So during the reign of the Abbasid Empire, there should be a movement to flourish in the Islamic realm of Persian culture. This movement was composed of non-Arab monarchs who yearned for integration with Arabs based on the idea of equality going beyond the tribalism and location. Therefore, this study covers the features of Arab and non-Arab establishment of brotherhood and equality in the Islamic Ummah during the pilgrimage to Mecca, and it aims to clarify the veracity of the Shufia spirit as a significant role of integration amongst the Muslim communities spanning regions and countries. This fundamental premises of um, Ummah's unity evokes the Abrahamic vision of universality. Um, I explore this topic because uh, I wanted to um, analyze uh, the significance of the Shufia movement in the history of Islam. And uh, these are my outlines from uh, first, the ramification of the pilgrimage and the formation of the Ummah. And the second part is Muslims' pilgrimage to Mecca and the reorientation of uh, religious identity. And um, next, Shufia's uh, etymological uh, significance and uh, Muhammad ideas of uh, Ummah. So I'm going to explore the Muhammad initial thoughts about Ummah, uh, more transnational and not uh, binded to a uh, uh, blood tie. And four, the origin and the significance of the Shufia throughout the Islamic history. And the last, I'm going to sum up with the implications through the scholarly assessment and the current Shufia debate, uh, especially the neo Shufia movement. As you all know, uh, migration, uh, Hizra, the migration characterized the origins of Islam. In the process of Muhammad migration from Mecca to Medina, known as Hizra, from Mecca to the city of Prophet Muhammad, laid the regional foundation for fulfilling the objectives of Ummah, the community that extended beyond the blood-related Quraysh tribe. At least the two distinct uh, pilgrimage practice involved Mecca and its surroundings. First, there was the Hajj, which uh, occurred in the month of Dua Hijja and prominently involved Mina and Arafat outside of Mecca. And second, there was the Umrah, which occurred in the month of Raja and was prim uh, primarily a focus on the sites within Mecca, namely the Kaaba and the two hills, Al Safa and the Mawa. In visiting Al Kaaba in Mecca, Muslims visit this location in order to affirm their religious identity and to reinforce togetherness with the intention of enhancing the cohesiveness of the Ummah community in the process of their journey to Mecca. The religious ceremonial heritage of worship in Mecca via Ibrahim and obedience through his son Ishmael is inextricably related to the trans-regional solidarity and the vision of Mecca. As a member of Islamic normative communities, individual Muslim, their visitation of Mecca and Medina bring about effects of social institutional religion through the common rituals and their obligations. So um, by practicing a pilgrimage, and moving to Mecca and Medina, they're reinforcing uh, their religious identity. And as an institutional body of religion that shapes community identity through the structural aspect of hierarchy, status, and role, individuals also attain a supernatural and sacred experience, theophany, the experience of divinity. So individually and also collectively, Muslims, their identity are reinforced. And the Muslim community, Ummah, is reserved and protected by inheriting the norms and rituals of Muslims. Hajj thus is regarded as one key factor or symbol of Islam and making Ummah more solid and institutional globally. 
and diverse individuals share common identities, beliefs, and Islamic practice regulations in the same time and location. Therefore, the Ummah to which Muslims belong and becomes not only a religious emblem of a community, but also a role model for global Muslims termed ideal communitas. If the birth of Islam was merely the beginning of a new religion centered on an Arabic um, and uh, Arabian uh, peninsula and cut off the flow of the uh, rich cultural heritage from the Byzantine and Persian eras, it is likely that Islam would not have been able to flourish political, economic integration, civilization, and development during the Umayyad and Abbasid periods. The political intellectual unity of Ummah expressed admiration for former empires such as the Byzantine and Persian empires, as what um, mentioned. And yet Muhammad wished to be free from the political influence by known Arabs made Arab unity achievable. So basically we can say the diversity in Ummah, but Muhammad preferred a more um, Arab-centered Ummah. And diversity in the Ummah, no uh, racism in Islam. So as we um, see the ta um, Taswiya, and we're going to uh, go through the Ummah, the, um, the diversity spirit, in the Quran, the Ummah is referred to as the community of all mankind. As you see the references from the Quran. And the Arab was comprised of the diverse types of groups, such as Muhammad's immediate successors from the early Meccan converts who became later immigrants to Medina. And the people from Medina and the early opponents of him who later became his followers in addition to the Bedouin tribes. Those are the main needs. Um, composed of uh, Arab centers, the first uh, converts, and uh, those are the uh, main uh, compositions of the Ummah, uh, the beginning. Also, the dispersed minority populations in Yemen and Persian Gulf were enslaved to Arab empire but pertaining to the Persian culture. Those who established treaties, treaties with the Muhammad but did not convert to Islam were protected as Zimnus. The majority of known Arabs who later converges to form the majority of the known Arabs in the opposite empire, the Persian form of um, cosmopolitan Islam. That you see uh, Muslims, um, not only the Muslims, but from different backgrounds, uh, it's called uh, the uh, the book of people, uh, the people of the book, Ahl uh, al So those Christians and Jews, uh, they were also um, existing under the Islamic rule in the medieval times. And Shufia is uh, derived from the Arabic time. So from uh, this slide, I'm going to uh, explore the Shufia, the etymology. And Shufia is derived from the Arabic term Shuf, ethnicity and people which indicates that it is impossible to differentiate one ethnic group from another. In other words, the idea of equality is inferred. And Muslims assert that it is exclusively tied to the taqwa in Islamic theology, protecting the human soul from the vilified evil and abandoning the forbidden. To put it another way, the birth of the Shufiya movement and belief were influenced by the dignity of a human individual derived from the word Shufi in the sense of the evaluating them based on the individual distinctions rather than race or skin colors or a collective identity. So according to Ibn um, Abdurab, Abdurabi, uh, the meaning of the uh, Shufiya implies that Muslims are brothers in equality and their lives are equal before them. This understanding of Shufiya is used as a traditional transmission and a space to explain equality before Allah. So initially, Shufia, um, when we uh, look at the etymology, it's actually the foundation of the equality of all the people, humankind, uh, in the Ummah. And according to um, Surah, uh, especially uh, the chapter 49, Ayat 13, we see, according to the uh, Muhammad, he said that uh, uh, his last speech, the, his community, to his community, he mentioned, Oh, Allah has erased the Arab splendors of the Jahiliya era 
and of his uh, predecessors. You are all descended from Adam, so uh, which means an everyone is equal because we are all originated from the air of Adam. And Adam, in turn, descendants are from the dust. With the exception of the equality of taqwa, justice, and non-Arab non-Arabic speaker, um, they are um, not more superior to Arabs, and everyone is equal. So this proclamation made by Prophet Muhammad agrees with uh, what Allah has spoken in other passages. In the presence of Allah, the most virtuous among you is the most honorable of you. So uh, this is a reference, and I'm going to deal with the top seed of uh, this verse. And egalitarian tafsir should be on. So um, how we know about uh, the the term should be on. So from the Quran, the reference, um, there are uh, different uh, tafsir interpretations or given throughout the history of Islam. So even Abbas appears to have written and dictated that the ships are the Malawi, the non-Arabs, and the uh, Kabili are the Arabs. According to the Al uh, Kushari, a Christian scholar, ships are the comparable to Indians and Iranians and Turks, and they can be traced back to the cities and villages of their ancestors. A Gabali is an, an Arab who can uh, trace their lineage back to their ancestors. So uh, one is uh, representing Arabs, and the others uh, representing uh, non Arabs. So. Um, here, this is the origins. Uh, if you look at uh, um, the Arab uh, versions, and you people, we have created you as men and women, and we have made you prosperous as a race, uh, Shuban, and an ethnic tribe, and Kabali, and Allah will uh, honor you if you treat your people equally. Allah will regard you as a righteous because Allah knows everything and observes everything in detail. So when we uh, judge people, um, from this verse, uh, we can find, um, actually the original meaning was uh, shub, it's a race, but later when uh, the scholars interpreted um, the shubs and kabali uh, represent uh, Arabs and the non-Arabs, not just race and the small groups of uh, ethnic trivial uh, groups. And according to the other Surah al hujrat and Surah al um, uh, Surah al Alun and Surah al Timidri and those uh, Hadith versions, and uh, we see the people and all mankind are equal because we are all are coming from the same origin of uh, Adam, so from the dust. So about uh, the gold seer, so I'm going to um, explore the first. Uh, scholar who um, deeply analyzed the Shufia movement in the medieval era. Um, he mentioned that um, it's not about just an Arabs and non Arabs, and the later the interpretation was more added. So, Arabs um, and uh, non Arabs are uh, distinguished uh, by their colors, black and red. So, um, still, we find uh, although um, the Muslims, they're pursuing the unity and integration in the Ummah, but there were uh, still um, divisions uh, between uh, Arabs and non-Arabs, and which is superior and inferior, and those are the, uh, the main concerns when they were all integrated in the uh, one um, uh, empire. So Arabs are not superior to people who are not Arabs, but neither are they superior to black people who are red. So uh, there are different versions of um, how we interpret um, Surah al uh chapter 49 and verse 13. But um, this is actually the foundation of the all humankind are equal. And Shufa's concept of unity and equal brotherhood in non-Arab in the Arab countries the through the Hajj, nevertheless has the realistic appearance of conflict, division, unequal development in the Ummah as a result of its own ethnic pride and claims of non-Arab ethnic superiority centered on Persia or Iran, according to the opinions of numerous scholars. The opposite, a Persian a cosmopolitan empire was renowned as a genius of Islamic civilizations of a multicultural development. However, the Arabs still harbored the enmities against the newly employed non-Arabs, the Azams, um, 
those non Arabs, and the non Arabs despise um, the previous Arab kingdom. So vice versa. So they are against, and they're claiming their superiority over the other groups. And during the the reign of the Abbasid Empire, the Shia movement flourished in the Islamic realm of the Persian culture, as I mentioned at the beginning. So what we're going to find is even though we um, say the integration and unity in the Ummah, but still there are some uh, diversions. Although Shufia has already started in Persia and Asia, it's also connected to non-Arab Central ideas and uh, progressed from the 5th century to 11th century and developed in Andalusia, even in Spain and other um, regions of Islamic Empire. Although there are many opinions about the origin of the term Shufia, it was also created by the uh, um, Karajat and which opposed the unique theory of the rights of the Quraysh because the, uh, the Quraysh tribe um, the mainly uh, became the, the Muhammad's uh, blood tie. So um, the, the Shias and also the roots of the Shias of um, Karajat, they were the main uh, opponents against uh, the Arab, uh, the pan-Arab movement. In the Abbasid Empire, this anti-Arab sentiment was dispersed among the general public and intellectual and formed a new political movement, developing into an idea that founded grounds of emerging minority ethnic groups in the ethnic protection against the Arab Islam. There was a difference of a Persian spirit disdained the Sahelia tradition and the barbarian cultures of Arabs. So during the Abbasid, in addition to the other religious backgrounds, the anti-Arab sentiment were widely accepted by the prominent groups of Persia, uh, Persia and Iraqi culture, who were the bearer of the new movement known as Zindik. So Zindik is the new term, but actually uh, during the, the Abbasid um, period, those Zindik, um, uh, and under that category, there were so many heresies and other uh, cultural religious background people were uh, bounded. Persons who prompted or thought at the time to be heretic were discriminated against, and they were called uh, Zanadik or Zindik. However, as people who had deviant views or were considered engaged in these acts of peers, they were included in the category of the Zindik. They were also the major groups to raise the Shufi movement. And during the rule of the Abbasid, it appeared that certain religious movements attempt to revive traditional Persian religious practice. The growing popularity of a heresy is another piece of evidence that supports this assertion. So many uh, Zindik, uh, those popularities are very renowned during the Abbasid era. Uh, here, uh, finally, I um, get to the point. Uh, the first scholar who explored the, uh, the Muslim studies, especially about uh, the Shufi movement, um, Ignaz uh, Goldziher was the first Western scholar to give a historical view and assessment of uh, Arab and non-Arab conflicts based on the pre precise anal analysis, um, analysis and academic research on uh, Arabic and Hebrew. And he assessed the influence of uh, early uh, Islamic ideas on the European Andalusian civilization because he lived as a minority, as a diaspora uh, Jews in uh, Spain. So he was focused on this Shufi movement from the perspective of minority conflict and minority ethnic movement. So through the Shufi, he first articulated and analyzed the friction and inequality between Arabs and non-Arabs and establishing the framework for the research on Judaism, Christianity, and Islamic study. And he compared uh, uh, the, his studies and made the foundation for the inequality in uh, Ummah and how the Ummah, uh, the integration was maintained. So his position was generally recognized in the 20th century. And after Goldsehir's analysis and his uh, scholarly works and other uh, many scholars also support and also against his ideas about uh, Shufi movement. And the true origin and progression of Shub can be discovered in Abbasid and not the Umayyads. That's what uh, Goldsier said. And Goldsier, he uh, 
he conducted a groundbreaking academic study of Sufi ideas in the early days, but he preoccupied a nationalist ideology. And that's the one thing that um, the other scholars later, they pointed out and criticized because he is preoccupied the nationalistic uh, uh, ideology and ethnic conflicts instead of integration. And the Shupia debate was a literary debate. Uh, that's what uh, uh, Ignaz mentioned. And as prominent and as evidenced by the clear political aspiration of the Persian and non-Arabs, and is rarely used in political movements of a prominent ethnic regional character, whether as a means to criticize political movements and heresies that were regularly discussed. Because of this, it is believed that the subject of Arabs and the topics of a national costumes and national honor designer that they conquered soon became the focal point of the Shufi movement. So Shufi movement, um, its uh, characteristics is not uh, dominantly political, but it actually starts from the literally, uh, literally debate. And one example of this would be making um, de uh, derogatory comments about the Arabs. Uh, to criticize um, from the cynical view. So non-Arabs, they criticize like uh, Arabs are barbarians or Arabs, they were eating the lizards or their um, the ancient Persians, uh, they had more a uh, rich uh, culture compared to the Arabs uh, who coming from the Zahilia, uh, the barbarian culture. So, so Shufia were not clearly political, but pr primarily in the process of forming a new government in Persian era. So the one, um, the prominent scholar, the Gibbs, he claimed that Shufia was a total cultural orientation pursued by the new Islamic society. It was problematic due to Shufia's desire to transform their inner spirit of the Islamic empire's politics, politics and the social institutions and the Arab-rooted Islamic culture into a Persian one. It was um, very uh, Arab-centered, but uh, throughout the history of Abbasid uh, empire, uh, the cultural orientation has to be moved and extended uh, and embracing more non-Arabs. So that was a um, struggling um, time. So how uh, that cultural orientation uh, from the Arabs to non-Arabs and integrate all of them uh, was the, the characteristics of the, the Shufia movement. So based on Gibbs' assessment, what asserts that Shufia was not simply preoccupied by literary critics, but that the study of the genealogy and linguistics was also influenced by the superior um, classes. So it's not only the literal um, literature critics, uh, and also genealogy, and also the other uh, aspects of the studies are included. So it has complex ideological discourse and inclusiveness that can represent a variety of contrasting values and positions. The Shufia is also more complicatedly discussed and conflict in various time periods, not only during the Abbasid Empire, thus it is reasonable to utilize Hena and Gosner, the later scholars, and, um, they uh, mentioned uh, this um, Shufia movement was not um, restricted or uh, constrained to the Abbasid period, but it actually um, is uh, the current trend and uh, trends um, historically and appears. So as a tool to examine modern political disputes and relationship circumstance in which Ethiopia is re-established regardless of political aims in various ages and the geographical locations. So the non-Arabs and their impact on the Ethiopia movement. So um, one of the, the prominent uh, scholars, the Bassam TV, he also highlights Iran's revolutionary role in the Ummah and the Islamic identity tra uh, transition in the Arab centered one. Therefore, it's essential to comprehend identities of non Arabs referred to as Malawi, Azam, and Zindik. Those were the mainly um, taking a part to um, add more diversity in the Ummah. So those who converted to Islam since the 7th century of Islam supremacy formed the spiritual history of Shufia, and the Islamic empire and its cosmopolitan worldview were dominant in absorbing the ethnic minorities and second-class citizen limited into the Arab-centered Ummah community, while anti-Arab sentiment lingered among minority groups in various cultural and theological contexts. Uh, I'm touring there at the end. Um, so. 
Hannah and Gottner, who newly interpreted Shupia as a flexibility in practical application, did not consider Shupia as the opposite historical trend. Rather, they viewed it as a political intellectual movement uh, transcending it, a particular historical period. So we can even find the Shupia movement and the Shupia trends even in current situation, like against um, Iran and against uh, Turkey, like against the Arabs. So it is a tool and um, it is uh, useful to understand the contemporary, even the contemporary ethnic conflicts events. So um, in his 1972 and published book, Minority in the Middle East, Important as a Political Factor in the Arab World, the Dutch academic Leonard Bizal invented the phrase neo -shupia. So Shupia again uh, rising up as the uh, emerging movement um, in current era. So new Shupia explains the current conflict remains relevant since the non-Arab and non-Muslim nationalistic colors of the contemporary Middle East and produce ethnic movements such as Kurds and Yazids and Mandians, Berbers and Copts. So those minority ethnic groups and also showing that uh, Shupia movement. So in sum, these are my um, the main points uh, I summarize and wrap up. It's true that during the reign of the Caliph uh, Sultan al Mamun, the spirit of the equality and respect for all people groups that Shupia fosters and matures the particularity in a Persian region. Second, by bolstering Shup's ethnic minority identity, the second class secretary workers were finally recognized in their emerging Persian Islamic empire and demonstrating non Arab superiority over Arab opponents. The Arab centered Ummah has extended its ethnic cultural scope through Shupia, and um, the last but not least, within egalitarianism, the Hatti reinforced the re uh, religious Ummah identity, but political social sectarianism remains to explain its own ethnic uh, legitimacy and superiority over the pan Arabs. So thus, the Ummah is composed of multi facets of diversity, including ethnic minority from non-Arabs and the so consequently, so this Shupia movement has the uh, legitimacy of minority community, community and identity, providing an explanation of the ethnic dynamics within Islam today and accounting for the causes of division of the Ummah community. It's also essential as a framework for the interpreting the Ummah. Thank you. Shukran Sazile.